Hey everyone, welcome to MTX Chess. Today we're covering five of the hardest two move checkmates you've ever seen. But before we begin, be sure to like this video and tell the YouTube algorithm that more people should be watching chess videos. So we'll go through five two move checkmates. The first one was a composition by Paul Morphy and he's in the picture on the screen, he's the one on the left. Paul Morphy designed this composition when he was only 10 years old. So it's white to move here in this position and win in two moves. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the winning combination for white. So this is a difficult position for white. Obviously, it's very tempting for white to take with the rook, but if you take the, the uh, pawn with the rook, the bishop takes back, right? It's also tempting for white to take the pawn with the pawn, but then the bishop gets away. And there's really no way for, for white to make any progress in that position either. This is such a great tactic because not only do you have to employ kind of a waiting move, but you also have to take advantage of Zugzwang. Zugzwang is when your opponent has no good moves to make. So the winning move for white here is rook h6. Wow, what a great move. Here, there's nothing black can do. He's in a total Zugzwang. If black moves their bishop away like this, then we, then we get rook takes h7 checkmate. If the bishop stays in that square, obviously the black king cannot move and this black h pawn can't move. So black's only other option is to capture the rook, g takes h6, and then white checkmate, checkmates with g7. So there you go. Paul Morphy's only composition, he made it when he was 10 years old. Pretty impressive. Our second composition is a beautiful checkmate, sometimes called Bowden's mate. In this position, white to win in two. So at this point, it should be pretty clear that white needs to get their light square bishop into check the king. And if that were to happen, the king would be checkmated. The problem though is that this pawn is here. This B pawn is gonna prevent, for instance, if white plays bishop C2, the B pawn block check, blocks check, and now uh, it, it's not really checkmating two because in this position, there's no way to deliver check. And so the way you checkmate here as white is you have, really have to key in on this B pawn and, and think about how to remove this B pawn. So the winning move here for white is rook C3. This is a great move. Obviously, if the B pawn captures the rook, we get bishop c2, and this is checkmate. We got the light square bishop delivering check, the dark square bishop taking away the escape squares, and the king covering these two escape squares up here. Now, what happens if black decides not to take the rook? If black plays something like b3, here we can we simply have rook take c4, and this is checkmate. The bishop takes away the escape squares, the rook delivers check, and the king takes away these two squares on top. So Bowden's mate, a beautiful mate, especially when you get the... Uh, when it's this position right here, you get the rook sacrifice and the, the bishops just slicing looks really nice. Our third beaten two is a beautiful, beautiful combination that I think is really difficult to find. Obviously this is a made up position. White has two queens, they have three bishops and black, there's just way too many pieces on the board and so few pawns. But this is a really uh, illustrative combination and it, the key to getting this is uh, using your pins wisely. So go ahead and pause the video and see if there's a way for white to win in two moves in this position. All right, so if you had paused the video and were thinking about some moves, some moves that you may have thought of are moves like f8 queen. Problem though is that after king takes, there's not really a clear way to checkmate in this position right here. You may have been thinking about um, like rook takes bishop or even uh, pawn takes queen here. But the problem here is that after queen takes, there's not really a great way to checkmate in this position right here. The queen can't come down to d7 because the knight will take, all that kind of stuff. So the winning move for white in this position is really hard to find, so congratulations if you found it, and that move is queen d6 check. Why does this move work so well? Obviously the king has no squares he can go to, he's forced to take the queen, and now with the king on this d6 square, look at black's pieces. The bishop is pinned, the knight is pinned, the other knight is pinned, and the rook is pinned, and it's white to move. So none of Black's pieces are doing anything for him. They're just taking space away from the king. And so can you spot the just gorgeous winning move here for, for white? So it is F, E8, under promotion to a knight checkmate, right? So pretty nice, pretty nice checkmate right there. You just needed something to deliver check. Obviously the rook's taking away the escape squares, the bishop taking away these escape squares, and the Black pieces are kind of preventing the, the, king's, mo the king's mobility anyway. So a really awesome checkmate. Obviously a made up position, but still pretty, pretty fancy. All right, our fourth checkmate in two is another tough one. So white to move and mate in two in this position. So when you when you try and solve these mate in twos, you always wanna look for the checks first. So 
Um, you may have been thinking like something like queen g3 or even uh, obviously the queen can't come to e3 because the bishop. But if we tried queen g3, let's see what would happen here. Obviously, if the bishop block check, the queen would take, and that would be checkmate, so that would be mate in two. But what if black played pawn f4? White can't checkmate on the next move. We know it has to be mate in two, so we know that queen g3 is not the correct move. So the correct move in this position is actually rook f4. Uh, and this is just a great move right here. What it does is it improves the position of this queen. Now the queen come into the game along this diagonal and land on either the d4 square or the c5 square. So let's think about what happens here. If the, if the king were to take the rook, we could have queen e3 checkmate. The queen's taking away the escape squares, delivering check, and this knight is taking away this other escape square. So the king's totally in checkmate. So that would be what happens if the king took the rook. So we, the king can't really take the rook. What about the bishop taking the rook? Well, here as white, we have queen c5 uh, checkmate, right? The queen is checking the king, taking away the escape squares, and the knight is taking away this square. So that's checkmate. So you can't capture the rook. Either way you capture the rook, you're going to lose this black. What if the black king tried to make a run for it, like, like coming king d6? Well, then we'd have queen c5 checkmate. The queen, again, taking away the escape squares, checking on the diagonal, and the knight taking, taking away this escape square. So it'd be checkmate. So really, there's no way uh, to get out of this checkmate. The king doesn't have any other squares, and you really can't do anything. For instance, like if the rook were to come, if you were to try and not take the, the white rook and not move the king, I mean, what would you play? You could play something like rook d6, but then you're just going to get queen coming to e3, and that's going to be checkmate anyway. So uh, a tough position for uh, for black, and obviously uh, not not a position you want to be in. And if the rook were like to come to c5, uh, then the queen would just come to, to d4 and checkmate. So no way to defend uh, for black. So that's a really nice checkmate in two. All right, the last checkmate in two. So this one is one of my favorites and it is really really complicated and so i encourage you to pause the video and really think about it because if you find it it's it's going to feel great so the one thing i would say about this is you need to know all the rules of chess in order to get this one so go ahead and pause the video and see how white can win in two so the key to understanding this the solution here is understanding that okay this black king is totally pinned down he cannot move to any squares all we need to do is white is to deliver check to the black king and win so obviously, if the if this like knight weren't here, we could just move our king to the d2 square and the queen checking would be checkmate. But obviously the knight's taking away the square right here. And so what is the winning move for white? Well, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh, the queen can come to e3 and then the next move, the queen, like for instance, if the pawn takes, then the queen will just move here and that's checkmate. The problem is um, the pawn have to take, for instance, if you came queen here, the, the rook could take. And now we can't take the pawn. If we take the pawn, it's not checkmate because the rook will capture our queen. And so that's not checkmate in two moves, even though like it's clearly winning. Another thing I was thinking is that you could do pawn takes f3, and then no matter what black's move, next move you just be able to uh, move your king up to e2 and get checkmate with the queen. Problem though is what happens after rook takes c2? Now we've got to respond this way, and now there's, we can't checkmate in one move, so it's no longer a mate in two. So the only way white can do a mate in two is by playing the really, really sneaky move, queen b2. And in this position right here, you might be wondering, how is this uh, mate in two? So obviously the uh, the rook is a little bit under attack here. Uh, and if black want, uh, it's protected, but uh, if this knight falls, right, the rook's under attack. So where can black move the rook? If black moves the rook uh, here, then we get checkmate with the queen coming all the way down to, to h8. So pretty nice, right? So you can't really move the black rook because you've got to keep the queen off uh, this diagonal right here. So the rook can't move. What about the pawn? What if we capture here, uh, pawn takes e2? The problem with that is that you get queen coming to b7 checkmate. Okay, so we can't move the rook. We can't move the pawn. Obviously, this pawn can't move. The king can't move. So black is in a total zugzwang. The only move that black can make in this position uh, that doesn't lose immediately, right? So if, if black were to play knight d2, we would just get king takes d2, and that would be checkmate. So the only move that black can make is knight a3. And so in this position right here, white to move and win. How can white win? So the answer here is that white would castle queenside. And believe it or not, the Lee Chess analysis board doesn't allow you to castle, so I can't even show it to you. But in this position right here, white would be castling queenside, and the, the white rook would be ending up on this d1 square, and it would be checkmate. And so this the reason why it's really important to remember your chess rules is you have to remember that even when you castle, obviously the king cannot move through an attack square. For instance, if we... If it was, um, like, let's say we played a throwaway move like this and the black pawn captured here. So obviously in this position, the black king cannot castle because the pawn 
is uh, is attacking the square, and the king cannot jump over an attack square. However, if we go back, in this position, you, you should be able to castle because even though the pawn and the knight are both covering uh, this square, it's a square that the, the rook travels through and not the king. So should be a legal castle. I'm not sure why Lee Chess isn't allowing me to do it. I actually read that they have a bug on their analysis board that doesn't let you uh, castle in some, some situations. But that would be uh, that would be the solution. So it would be queen uh, b2, uh, causing a total zugzong for black, and then after knight a3, castle uh, castle queen side, resulting in checkmate. So pretty snazzy mate in two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's so amazing that Paul Morphy, at the age of 10, came up with just like an incredible chess composition. It's just pretty legendary from Paul Morphy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and help our channel grow. New content coming every week. You won't want to miss it. See you guys next time.